Any update on Connor McDavid's availability for tomorrow? Um, he's, I know, just seeing the trainers right now, but I thought it was a good sign that he practiced in a full pregame skate today. Or, uh, you know, so we'll see. But uh, he looked pretty good to me. Yeah, he, was, he seemed to be taking part in all the drills, skated well. Yeah. Uh, has to be hard for him to be on the sidelines watching, so we assume the player really wants to play. But what are the hurdles here? Who gets the final... The final nod here. Well, I think it's in conjunction with a few things. It's the player in conjunction uh, with our team doctor, our team training staff, and then ultimately the organization as a whole. But, uh, you know, uh, I thought today was a good day. It was a good step, and we'll see how he is when he wakes up in the morning. Front left. Uh, Jay Warren Fogle was skating with uh, Drysaddle and McDavid today. Leon says maybe one of the few guys is off to a really good start. What have you liked so much about Fogle, who just continues to kind of keep working himself up the lineup? Yeah, I mean, he's somebody that um, is skating well. Uh, he's creating havoc on the floor check. He's shooting the puck. Um, it's no accident that... Uh, he's having some success because he's going to hard areas. He's finding himself in hard areas in order to to find success. And, you know, it's a credit to him. He's a very hardworking person. Um, you know, I'm happy for him because uh, for a long time he's he's been fighting for the movement up the lineup and he deserves everything he's getting. Leon and Ryan mentioned that they feel the game's coming. The frustrating part is... We'll have 20 minutes or 40, and then there's like a lull. Yeah. So as a coach, I'm assuming you probably see the same thing. How do you how do you end the lull? How do you try to avoid the lull? What do you do? What how do you try to help as a coach? Well, we talk about it. Um, we're aware of it. That's step one. Um, we talk about it as a team. Um, you know, there are some some things that we can use as triggers to try and make sure that we're ready and. Um, we eliminate some of those lapses or those lulls. And um, the bottom line is, through our first seven games, we haven't done that well enough. Um, but those seven games have been played. Our focus is on making sure that we're playing a good game tomorrow. I think our team's in a, a good frame of mind. We have a good sense of belief in each other. And um, But we got to go out and show it. And we got to show it for 60 minutes. It can't be... A 20-minute plan. It can't be a 40-minute plan. It has to be a well-executed 60-minute plan tomorrow. Left side. Second hey, Jay. Yep. Um, I know you guys have kind of been under the gun since the season started, but coming out here and, and having that time with your family, with the kids, kind of bringing a moment of levity to everything. How much does that help? You know, take the focus away from you know what you guys like the pressure you guys are under, and then then you can kind of refocus on this tomorrow. Well, yeah. I mean, DVD. I'd say. We're not off to the start that we wanted to get off to. Um, but that doesn't take away from our, our um, passion to do our jobs as best we can. And, um, you know, our tough stretch has, has been at the start of a season, so it feels different. Um, but I think everybody is working and endeavoring to be at their absolute best. Any time when you're in one of those uh, situations that we find ourselves in, and you can do something out of the ordinary, like partake in a, an outdoor game at home, families are, are in the building, um, you practice outside, you have a family skate, I think that brings juice to the group. Uh, and, and provides a necessary jolt to the system. That's what our hope is. I thought today was a good day. We have to build on it by having a good day tomorrow. Front left. Coach, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, you were a part of the 2016 Heritage Classic. The Oilers played in against the Jets. Uh, now a number of years later, you're a part of another one with the team in a bit of a different role, right? Yeah. Um, so could you just maybe reflect on, you know, uh, all that sort of thing? Yeah, this is actually my third personal outdoor game. I was involved in one uh, in California with the Sharks and the, the Kings um, years ago at uh, the 49ers Stadium there. Um, I think each one of these games takes on its own life. It takes on the uh, personality of the city that's hosting it. You referenced the one in Winnipeg. I thought that was a fantastic um, occasion. We won the game, which was very nice, but... 
um, what that city did um, to put on such a great um, outdoor game I thought was excellent. Um, I know that here in the City of Champions in, in Edmonton, we're very proud to be hosting this game. And um, we're looking forward, uh, as I said, um, to make sure that we're playing at an optimal level. Right side in the back. Jay, uh, given the specialty of this event and what's done is done, the record is what it is. Yep. Does this almost present a perfect pivot point or perfect potential pivot point? Or as Ryan Rashog would say to my right, the TSN turning point to the start of the season? Oh, hey, you threw that out there. I like it. Uh, We're well, not that's, hiring. What, <laughs> that's what our hope is. Yes, that's what our hope is. You know, we've, um, we're looking for that stimulus to get us going to play at the level that we know we can play at. You know, I said to our team, I think we've had 100, 100 wins in the last two years. Um, you know, we're returning a lot of the same players. We have it in our room. Um, it's about making sure we dig in here. We understand that we didn't get off to the start we wanted to get off to, but uh, we, we have the answers internally. And, uh, but it's time to get playing. And does this opportunity represent a potential pivot point? Potentially, but talk's cheap. We've got to go out and do it. I just uh, throw a little change up at you. What do you think of Stuart Skinner's gear, kind of honoring Grant? Oh, here? yeah, it looked good to me. It looked good to me. I just, uh, you know, like for me, I think our jerseys, you know, the sticks that players are using and stuff like that, that they're kind of throwbacks. I think it's uh, it's pretty interesting to watch. and obviously a, a talking point for our, our fan base too. Last question in the back. Jay, for the first number of games, when we talked to your players post game, there was kind of a sense of calm and steady as she goes, right? Nobody wanted to overreact. Last game, it was a little bit more frustration and, and outward anger. I don't know if you yep. pay attention to what they say after the games or not to the media, but did you sense that in your group that it's kind of shifted to some kind of fed up with it and can that be a good thing? I think it can be a good thing, yeah. I think... Um, the bottom line is, as I said, this team uh, over the last two years has won over 100 games. I think we've played five playoff rounds, which is as much as anybody's played in the last two years. We have um, a lot of really good hockey players. We haven't played to our potential yet. We are aware of that. We're, we are working to make sure that we take a step tomorrow. I think it's a, an opportunity, just like it's an opportunity to play in a, in a unique type of game like the Heritage Classic. It's an opportunity for us uh, to take a step. Um, and I know that our team plays its best hockey against its provincial rival.